Welcome to our Window Masks 101 workshop about making and using window masks. The goals of our King County Project Making Window Masks and this Window Masks workshop are to help people and to have fun doing it. Of course, it's essentially a very sad reason we're here today that the need for window masks is based on this horrible pandemic we're going through. And we mourn for everyone who has died and everyone who has suffered um, in, in so many ways. But today in this workshop, we're going to focus on love and thankfulness, trying to help people basically. So thank you to all of you here today for watching this for everything that you've done and are doing to help get through this pandemic and to make the world a better place. The main pattern that our program has used to make window masks is the SSOL pattern created by a teacher in Singapore. SSOL stands for sowing seeds of love. And that's what we're trying to do here today, sowing seeds of love. A window mask is simply a reusable cloth mask with a clear plastic panel so your mouth can be seen. Window masks, also known as smile masks, can help us communicate with people including those who are deaf or hard of hearing in speech therapy, learning to read, or learning a language. I'm Tom Watson, coordinator for the King County Repair Events Program, which this Window Masks Project is a part of. I work for King County Recycling and Environmental Services, and the reason an eco program is involved with a program like this is that these masks reduce waste and conserve resources because they're reusable, and because we try to use fabric scraps to make the masks. We'll have the recording of this workshop posted on our main King County Window Masks website. We also have plenty of other resources on there. That website can be your go-to source of info about window masks. You can just search King County Window Masks to find the website. And you can always contact me if you have any questions. A few housekeeping items before we get rolling. We're hosting this as a Zoom webinar only the speakers have their microphones and cameras on. This webinar includes both closed captioning and ASL, American Sign Language, interpretation. Our two ASL interpreters, Mary and Sarah, will be switching off doing the interpretation every 15 minutes. To enable closed captioning, click the CC transcription button at the bottom of the screen we have also put a link in the chat if you would prefer to see the captions on another screen. You can submit questions anytime during this workshop by using the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom window. We'll try to answer as many as possible. Include your name and email address in there um, with your question, and I'll try to respond within a few days if we're unable to answer your questions during the webinar today. So let's get started on making window masks that section by talking to our project's most prolific window mask sewer, Kathy Etchison. She'll share, share her insights on the cloth fabric to use and the ties for the masks. So take it away, Kathy. Kathy, can you turn on your, your video? Is that, is that working? Kathy, you're on mute. Can you unmute yourself? Okay. Am I okay now? Hi, Kathy. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, the 100% cotton is the best kind of fabric to use for the masks. It, it the um, high thread count is the best kind to use. This piece right here is batiking. It is very uh, tight knit and it is the same on both sides. But the high grade cotton fabric that you buy like at Joann's fabric um, is very good. Don't buy the $2.99 fabric, buy the um, $6.99 fabric and use your 50% off coupon 
and then you'll be getting the right kind of uh, fabric for the mask. And you also want some muslin, to high-end muslin, because I like to put uh, white on the inside of my mask. Uh, it's not necessary, but that's just what I do. So anyway, the um, then then for the other uh, masks, there's a lot of places you can get the fabric. You can get it at Joanne's Fabric, Pacific Fabrics. The little local quilt shops are a very good place to get fabrics. We have one in Kent called the Running Stitch Fabric Store. And in the back of the store, they have roll ends of very high-end fabric. And they um, it's at a very reduced price. So that is a very good uh, place to get those. And then for the other things you need for the um, masks are the vinyl. We're gonna have a large uh, discussion on the vinyl later, but this vinyl comes from Joann's with your 50% off coupon. And it's in the um, upholstery fabrics uh, department and I get the medium. So that's a good one for that. So anyway, and then you need elastic for the, the ears. And you can buy that, the elastic at Joann's. There's several different kinds. There's the quarter inch, the eighth inch, there's woven, there's round, all kinds. So, but I prefer this small quarter inch. I actually bought this online. And um, so we, put that in the, in the mask. And the way I do it is that I put the elastic in the sleeve with a knot so that you can, the person who's going to be using this can retie this knot to match their face. And then you pull that back through the, um, through the sleeve to make that, uh, to make that work for you. And then another thing that you uh, need is double back tape, double back tape. And that is for when you're doing your mask, you need to secure that piece of vinyl into the opening so that it doesn't slide out. And so that's what the uh, double back mask tape is for. And it works really well. And then these little clips, which you also can buy at Joann's, uh, are very helpful for when you get the mask in, you turn it over and sew this to get that top part. And then, and that holds it in place. And then when you go to, um, I don't know my, where my little piece of elastic went, but you go, uh, I can't find my elastic, but what I do, then when you fold this over, I put my elastic in there and fold it over and it all goes around so that you don't have to put the elastic in there later. It's sort of, if you're making a lot of masks at once, that comes in handy. So anyway, and then when I volunteer at the Children's Hospital Thrift Store in Kent, and I make masks for them. I don't make window masks, but I make regular ones. I put all the masks in one of these containers. It's just a sandwich, cheap sandwich bag. And that way they're not handled by everybody and they're more sanitary and less apt to pass on uh, germs, yeah. And, and Kathy, uh, can you um, just, whenever you hold something up, can you hold it up just a little bit higher for people? Oh, okay. <laughs> Almost like right in front of your face. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. And I might be holding them up too. Here's, uh, um, here's one of the ones that Kathy made and I'll be showing others and showing some other things too. Um, Kathy, um, thank you for that. And we'll, we'll be um, talking to you more later. And as is the case for everything we cover today, we may get back to, to some of these topics in the questions. And you can always go to our website for additional resources and links to lots more information. Um, next, we're going to talk about the plastic for the windows. Um, our sewers have used primarily um, medium gauge clear vinyl fabric purchased from Joann's Fabrics. Environmentally, vinyl 
also known as PVC or polyvinyl chloride, is considered a problem plastic, but that's primarily because of issues with production and disposal. Vinyl should not be heated, so how you wash and dry these masks is important. Basically, wash in cold water by hand is fine, and hang dry or air dry, no heat on the, on the mask with a plastic window, with the vinyl window. And we'll talk more about washing in the using window masks part a little later. The reason that we've used vinyl fabric for the plastic window is because it's been the easiest to sew and the easiest for us to, to procure, to obtain for this. Um, so um, in addition to Kathy, we also have with us uh, three other sewers who have made window masks for us, Amanda Radak, Lori Heap, and Jessica Nash. Um, Amanda, would you like to share your, your thoughts on the plastic for the window and your experiences? Yeah, so we're, we're getting some questions about what materials. And we when we started making window masks, we were trying to figure it out too. Um, and we one of my first masks I made with a sheet protector. So just the plastic that you would shove a piece of paper in. And one of the dilemmas with that is that it wrinkles. You can't keep it clear and it's very hard to see through. My son was making face shields and he had some hard plastic. So I experimented for a while with that and it doesn't keep a shape. So you can't get it to sit away from your face such that your lips aren't touching the mask all the time. So we ditched that idea, really durable, but again, not serving our purpose. And we ended up with the medium gauge clear vinyl fabric. Kathy, could you hold up the yard good? Cause you've got the spool of it. And then, um, so Kathy say hi, just to get the speaker view switched to you. Yes, this is the, the vinyl that I got. Actually, it's uh, a post, like I was saying, it's a upholstery fabric, but it works really great. The only thing when you cut one of these out, when you go to pick it up again, you might not always be able to find it because they disappear really fast. <laughs> so earlier today, I crumpled my sheet protector and I crumpled my vinyl. And they are distinctly different visibility. So the medium gauge yard good is a, definitely our preference. You can hand sew it, you can machine sew it on a basic machine. Most of our sewers have quilting machines, so they definitely just slide right through this. It's not an issue. Um, and I think that's what I have on window. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is breathability. So one of our resources on the King County website, the Maker Mask website, has done some studies on breathability and mask usage. And their recommendation is that no more than a third of the mask surface be window. So two thirds of your mask has to be breathable. Kathy pointed out the folds that she we've been putting in the top of the mask and that creates space between the face and the mask and it creates more breathable space. So Kathy's gonna hold that up and talk so the sweet speaker view will switch. And then Jessica or Lori, if you wanna jump in. Okay, well, this is just the way that like I was explaining, explaining and then when you fold that up, it actually makes, um, like on this mask, it actually makes a nose piece thing where you don't really, it's not really necessary that you have a wire in there because it just kind of sticks to your face. And then this goes down and kind of goes right under your chin. So it makes a really good um, secure and you breathe through these and that's where you get the breathing through there. And that's where the, it's important to have the uh, high thread count fabric is so that the germs don't get through on either side. And this sucks up right to your face, so you should be good with that. And that's the, the SSOL, the Sowing Seeds of Love pattern that is on our, our website and 
lots of great information, videos and everything. So that's the one that we're, we're talking about. We'll probably come back to the, um, the window fabric, the plastic fabric later. But for now, let's move on to um, sewing techniques and, and tips. So Lori, would you like to share some, some of your thoughts on those? Sure, and I'm just I'm just modeling the mask that I just finished. Um, it looks it feels really good. I can breathe through it, and I don't see a lot of fogging. I don't know what you guys see, but it seems to be um, very effective. And I think they're awful cute too. <laughs> so some of the sewing um, the things I would recommend. There's a question here about the feed dog scratching the plastic, because your plastic will be between the layers of the fabric your feed dogs are not going to ruin the fabric when you're sewing it, uh, the vinyl fabric when you're sewing it. So feed, um, what are you saying, Lori, feed dog? So the feed dogs on your sewing machine, that, that's okay. what feeds the, the material through your machine. They are very rough. And in some cases, depending on what you're sewing, it can damage it. But in this case, since you're putting the plastic between like a sandwich between the material, so you have a sandwich going here, then the stitching just goes right on the material and it doesn't touch the plastic so it won't ruin it or make holes in it um, to make it less effective. And Lori works at a sewing machine store and, uh, and is very experienced. In, and so you, so it's good to know that your, your experience making these masks today for the first time actually. Yes. You made you made other types of cloth masks um, for our project before, but that so you you were pretty happy with your experience, and you wanted you were going to talk more about about the machine use too, right? Right, I'm very happy with how these came out. I actually found them easier than the first masks we made, and um, I work for Quality Sewing and Vacuum, and we uh, have a myriad of machines that'll help you with this. But the, the big thing to remember is your needle size needs to match the fabric. So you want to use, uh, and you want to use a Microtex or a Sharps needle. I, I find with most machines and this particular project, especially if you're using uh, the batik that Kathy's using, the Sharps needle is going to give you a much better uh, quality product and it's going to handle the fabric better. And then um, always keep your machine clean, of course, because it won't, it, it won't work if it's got lint or anything in it. Um, it'll be unhappy. Um, and I've been doing this on my Bernina all day and it's been working just fine. These are very easy to do. Thank you, Lori. And we'll come back to, to more of this. Um, also, now let's jump right in though to the using window masks section. And, and um, I would like to introduce um, Barbara Bryant. And, the, and um, here's our, our slide is on with, with some tips, but um, Barbara um, is children's therapy lead at Valley Medical Center in Renton. She's a speech language pathologist and the children's therapy department at Valley Med is really the reason this project exists when we were doing our before regular cloth masks were readily available we were making um these sewers here were making window masks for um for valley med to be used by by patients and staff um and patients families and non-medical purposes and then the children's therapy department asked us to um to try making some window masks. And so we did. And so, so Barbara, thanks for being with us today. I know you've been working hard uh, all day at your, your job doing speech therapy. And um, so, so welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me here. Um, and thank you. Uh, I do wanna start by just saying thank you for everyone involved in making these and distributing these. Uh, they have been really helpful in our clinic and our, you know, I kind of think we have a toolbox of options. We have face shields, we have surgical masks, we have, eye protection, you know, we have all these different things we can choose from. And this is a really nice thing to have in our toolbox. Um, so just a little bit about us. We're an outpatient pediatric clinic in Renton. We serve kids um, birth to age 19. Uh, one of our biggest um, populations is autism. 
Uh, and a lot of times people who are on the autism spectrum have trouble with sensory things, have trouble um, when things change. So we've had a lot of kids um, who get scared when they see us in masks and they can't see our face. Um, let's see. Uh, so yeah, some example of the kids that we use these with would be someone who's very young um, and you know we see a one or two year old and they don't know who's under the mask. Um, if we're working on sounds, so maybe I'm saying, okay, put your tongue on your teeth like this. Um, they need to be able to see what my mouth is doing for that to make any sense. Um, we do have puppets and we draw things, but seeing it on a face really uh, helps a lot. Um, we're working on social language. So if we have an older kid, perhaps that we're working on body language and you know the body language on our face is really important when somebody Somebody can smile in lots of different ways and it can mean something different. And um, not being able to see what your, your lips are doing can be really hard when we're working on those skills. Um, so just some thoughts about our use on them. I would say that most of our speech therapists have used them. Um, so this is the one that I've been using. I would definitely say um, having the straps, the Velcro or the uh, elastic straps, as opposed to the tying um, works much better. Um, it's a lot easier to get on and off. Um, I'm not sure if mine is different than the ones you guys are making, but my screen pops out so I can take it out in order to wash it and put it back in. I don't know if there's been, is that typical or? That was one of the first ones that we made and I'm glad okay. that those are working for you, but, but now pretty much all the ones, um, we're making, um, have the, the sewn in panels. Sewn in. Okay. I was wondering about that. Okay. Um, I was, so I was going to say some of the, the pros and some of the response we've gotten from families is um, parents really like them. And it, I think that they respond well to them. I, we get a lot of laughter when we come out wearing them. They're, they're inherently a little bit funny at first, but um, Overall, they're very, very positive with parents. And then we'll give the smaller ones to the kids to take home and bring back with them for each set. And we found that um, uh, the kids are actually bringing them back. Uh, most of the time, I mean, half the time they forget their masks. They, they don't show up with their mask, their regular mask. But when they have one of the window masks, they seem to see a really big value in it because they'll remember to bring it back and use it. Um, let's see, what else? What was that? I just said that's great to hear. Yeah. Um, so I, let's see. Um, I also will often use them if I'm meeting a family for the first time um, because it can be really um, isolating to meet somebody with a mask on and not really know what they look like. So um, those are some of the situations where I use them. Um, some of the difficulties that we do have with them sometimes, um, we have to wash them with a special wipe uh, that we have at the hospital, at least the plastic part. And that can lead to the plastic getting scratched or discolored. Um, so that can happen sometimes. Um, we would need to change it with kids. So it definitely helps if we can have several masks that we can be washing and drying while using another one. Um, so it helps to not to have you know several to choose from. Um, um, Barbara, that that wiping requirement. So that's a requirement from the from the hospital that. Yeah. That and they are called Oxyvir wipes. I believe they're just very strong hydrogen peroxide, I think is what they are. Um, so yeah, all of our stuff, I mean, gets scratched and <laughs> discolored. You know, my, my goggles, you know, all of those things. So that's, I don't think that's a, a sewing error or anything like that. It's just kind of the reality of using them in a hospital. How do you wash the cloth part? Um, just uh, cold, cold soap and water, and then hang it up to dry. That's the way I've washed one that I've used also. Yeah, at the main hospital, they have some ultraviolet or or something along those lines machines you can put things in and have them sanitized in a minute. Uh, but we don't have access to those down here. And you wouldn't want to do that with the sewn-in panels. Yeah, you don't yeah. Want to do that with the That's what I was thinking. So. Um, so yeah, so that's just, you know, one of the issues, but, you know, if we could use a mask 10 times, that's better than throwing 10 away, you know. Um, let's see, I, I was, I was going to say, if, if we still made the ones where you pop them out, then having spare plastics would be helpful, but I, I don't think that that's feasible. 
it, it seems like that, that that just hasn't worked. Those just haven't worked that well for the sewers or the users. Yeah. Cassie there, um, our, our main contact at Children's Therapy has said that, that at first there was a problem with, the, with the, some of the re, um, removable panels popping out. Yeah, and I think that that probably has happened. Mine, mine luckily hasn't, but I'm sure some, some have. Um, so yeah, it's just, I think that using these is often, it's a risk benefit analysis of, you know, we have some kids who can't wear masks at all. We have some kids who can only wear them for short periods. You know, we've got that menu of options. So sometimes I'll be wearing the mask and then I'll have the child across from me with a plexiglass barrier so, you know, I'm still getting this extra layer of protection and they can still see my face, but then there's also a barrier in between us. So a lot of times it's a matter of, you know, how do we make this the most safe for this situation? Let's see. Um, I do find that if mine doesn't fog up very much, if I'm just sitting down and speaking normally, um, if I'm chasing a two-year-old around the playground, um, <laughs> it fogs up very quickly. <laughs> so. You know, a, a lot of times it's, I might wear it for 10 minutes of the session and then I might switch over if I'm gonna be a lot more active. What do you use for defogging? So I haven't really used too many things. Um, you know, I've mostly tried to limit my, my uh, exertion in them. I know that a few people have tried fogging sprays. Um, you know, I think one or two people tried toothpaste but I don't believe it worked very well. Um, I've, I've tried it and it's worked for me. Oh, does it work for you? Okay. Um, the way you guys are doing. They might not, they may not have had quite that, but, and we're constantly wiping it off with the wipes as well, which can be a problem. Um, I find that it's, you know, if, if it's getting too sweaty, I'll go to a different activity and let my face cool down a bit and then come back to it. And that's usually the strategy that I use at least. Okay. Um, for um, for for defogging, um, shaving cream has a, has also worked for a lot of people. Just a tiny little little dab, just just wiping on the inside. Um, and um, I I want to share one comment that we received um, just today from someone who used uh, toothpaste on one of the masks that our project made, one of Kathy's masks. And, and, um, and here's a quote, um, the email I got today. I wore the window mask for a few hours after putting some toothpaste on the window and it worked well. It started fogging a little after about two and a half hours. I was almost done wearing it so I didn't reapply the toothpaste layer then, but I think I could have just reapplied it and it would have kept working well. The toothpaste smell was a little refreshing too. So that was a comment about the, about the defogging. Um, other thoughts, um, Barbara, on on the the use of the the masks. Um, is there anything else that you can you can think of? I'm so glad that they've worked for you, and thanks so much. Yeah, for, they've been really helpful, and we really have appreciated them. Um, no, I don't think so. I think just um, you know knowing that we have this extra tool is really helpful, and it's been really um, appreciated to know people in our community are sewing these for us. And, you know, we've been, we closed for one week to provide childcare to uh, the nurses' children that were having to work, but otherwise we've been seeing kids this whole time. Um, sometimes more teletherapy, sometimes less, but we haven't been closed any of that time. And, you know, that's felt a little bit um, scary at times. And so far, knock on wood, we haven't had any cases in our clinic um, and, you know, I think part of that comes down to knowing that we have these different tools and that we have the community support to keep ourselves safe. safe. Well, th well, thank you and, and stay on. We'll, we um, may have some questions and, and um, there may be some other things you, you want, want to add. Um, and so another, another comment we received about um, uh, related to uh, fogging this, this is um, a comment from someone that was on the, the City of Kirkland Facebook page and they, they were helping to promote this workshop. And here's the comment. I work at a school for the deaf and have been making these like crazy since June. To answer some questions, they're not perfect. They do fog up and they are less comfortable than a regular cloth mask. 
But if it means my students can read my lips, I'll wear them in a heartbeat. Dish soap, bar soap, and anti-fog spray all really help with the fogging. And so it was great to get that comment. Um, in, in most cases, we, everyone is just with the, with the pandemic and everything going on, where the hospitals especially, but others, it's just, no one has time to really provide much feedback to our program about these. And, and so, so um, I, I sure appreciate you, Barbara, and others there who have been, been willing to provide that, that feedback. Um, let's see if there's any... Um, I wanted like to say, I wanted to give a little too. Yes, I'd like, yes, jump in here, Jessica, one of our sewers, Jessica. Um, I, I really want to hear your, you have a, you have a funny story about. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my mother-in-law who we live with is deaf. So we do use these like on every time we take her out, which is rare because it gets very, it is hard to communicate with them, with her. So you're wearing those? Yes, I'm wearing them regularly. This is a sewn in one. Um, and I throw this in the washer with the um, plastic and everything. And then I put it on a very low heat in the dryer and it comes out just fine. So I'm completely just throwing them in there. Um, I like the, the bar soap is the one that I have liked the most for defogging. And I just put it on ahead of time. And if I'm finding, finding I have fog while I'm out and about, I'll sometimes take off the mask and put a little hand soap on underneath to refresh it. And so that's just how I've kind of handled like the out and about situation. Like when I'm out taking a walk with her, it gets difficult in the mid when it just, it's like little droplets around there. But my husband wears it often. And so um, the funny story was, he told me that he, his mouth always tastes like soap and I've never had that problem. I said, stop sticking your tongue out at your mother. So, <laughs> so that, was, that was the funny story. But um, yes, it does work very well. And throwing in the, them in the washer is not that big of a deal. That's we, all I had to add. I think with the, using the vinyl though, I do think people really need to be careful about the heat just in yes, case that might that's make- That's why I, I do it on the air dry and I just do these by themselves. And it, I just am able to pull them out quickly that way, instead of having them sit around. And, I, so. and it has been recommended um, to, to use cold water wash rather than full hot water. Rather yes, I, I just throw it. Actually, I just kind of throw it in like a regular wash because I wanted to see what um, difference is and it has not harmed the plastic at all. It's still pretty see-through. The only issues come in with fogging, so. Okay, because because the vinyl could conceivably leach and and, yes. and we wouldn't realize that I still think it's better to really really not use use heat on it. But uh, but thank you for sharing your experiences. I mean, you were a you were a long convert. I, um, it took it took a while for you to really yes, and them. those yes, they are very. I do not make them as neat as everybody else does. Mine's mine turn out very messy, but they still yep. work. That doesn't look messy. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, that was it. Well, uh, thank you, Jessica. So let's see, um, other, um, any of the other sewers, would you like to um, share any more, um, share any of your thoughts related to the, the use of these or, or um, Barbara add anything else? So I just saw a question about the double-sided tape and a product that I've loved for years that I just used on the ones I made today is called Wash Away Wonder Tape. And it will stick uh, the plastic in there until you get it sewn down. And then that tape will dissolve when you do wash the mask so it doesn't leave any residue. And I find that works really well to put the plastic in. Thank you, Lori. You're welcome. And um, and I'm not seeing the questions. We'll get into those later. But um, we um, does anyone um, else want to share some thoughts um, about about the use of these or the or the fogging 
it seems like we've covered it pretty well. And we can get back into it in the in the questions too. Um, or so sowers, if you um, if you think of anything else you want to to um, to bring in about that, and I and I guess actually I, there is one one other quote I'm I'm going to read. Um, um, while yeah. you pull that up. One of the things uh, Barbara mentioned that she prefers the ear loops, and I personally on a mask prefer the ties behind my head. Um, the I've heard issues with hearing aids and ear loops conflicting with each other. So all of the masks that we've been making have a channel and somebody could change how it's attached to their face. So they, if they received one with ties, they could put in elastic or that's, that's a modification that can happen later. That's a great tip. And here is one, for example, that, that Amanda just made and it has the ties. And so, um, as she said, you can, you could, um, replay with the channel. You could, you could put elastic in that. And I've actually done that with, with my masks, my regular cloth masks. Um, and, and that, that works really well. And that's, I think um, a lot of people prefer um, elastic because it's just easy to take them on and off, especially window masks. You might be taking them on and off a lot. Um, and so that, and that's a little harder to do with the ties, but, but for some people like with hearing aids, that's gonna work better. So, so if possible, if a program is, or a person is making a bunch of these, maybe maybe they could could do a little variety. So this is another one that, that Amanda just made that, that does have the elastic. And in this case, she put the elastic loops on the top rather than on the coming off the side, um, which is another way. So, so that's just, um, but there's a lot of options. The user can, can convert, convert all of those based on what they want to. You can just I'll put just a shoestring in there too. Yep. Yes. And I'll jump in, and, you know, explain why I said that. And in, in our setting, at least, um, you know, a lot of times we have the kids dropped off, parents not, might not be with them, and we don't want to get within that close to a kid to help them tie them. And a lot of our kids would not be able to. So that's, you know, one of the reasons. But I can certainly see why we would want to have each, each kind for, for different uses. Um, but that's just kind of the reason why um, I find that. I think for definitely, definitely for kids, um, whenever, whenever um, a, you're making a smaller size for kids, um, I would always use the use the elastic, and not the not the ties. It seems is that there could almost be a choking hazard with the with the ties. I've thought, but but that, that's just my thoughts. Um, Kathy, were you were you going to add something else or? Um, no, you can actually just buy shoestrings, you know, a pair of shoestrings and, and re, re do this, you know, for, for an amateur or beginner or something. They can do shoestrings and put them in here in place of this, and it works just as well. And also, this uh, retiable deal makes it better for kids and everything where you can make it fit your face, but you can actually uh, get shoestrings, just buy shoestrings at the store if you're not, um, if you don't have anything else. And actually some of the masks we've made, um, so, um, Gail, one of our other sewers who can't be with us today, she, she was using shoestrings and I think that might be, those might be some of the ones that um, the Children's Therapy is using at, at Valley Med and that in, in some ways it, is, it can be more, more, more comfortable some, sometimes too, but, but um, and, and then sometimes um, sewers provide um, the extra elastic so you can, you can switch out too. So I used a sliding knot on mine. Um, so that way you can adjust it either larger or smaller very easily as well. And it's just that simple to pull it through and then you can pull it back into, pull the knot portion back into the casing so that the knot portion is hidden. And then, and that way you can adjust it any way you want to. Um, yes, that works great. A number of the ones we made have been like that. 
I believe Gail, I think that's the same one that Gail called the fisherman's knot. Oh, right, right. Yes. And, and also you can use t-shirts. You can just, oh, yeah. t-shirt yarn is fabulous. And so you just cut a little tiny piece of t-shirt and that works and it has stretch as well. And I do did the fisherman's yarn on that and that fisherman's it's comfortable. Stuff. It's very comfortable. Yeah. Yes, t-shirt yarn is fabulous. So another thing, early on when we were doing solid masks for Valley, they Valley Medical Center, they wanted no nose wire because it was people were using paper clips or cuts of aluminum foil or just really weird metal options. Um, I have three glasses, glasses wearers in my house. And so going without nose wire in masks didn't work for them. And so I found a um, product at McClendon Hardware that is a, um, it's a tie for your tomato plants. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's foam covered. It's designed to be out in the weather and it's about the right length for the bridge of a nose. And will my masks will pretty much stay on my face without the straps, just with the wire. And we've been using that in our household masks for eight months and have had no issue with it. So the latest batch that I just sent to Tom, I've added those, that product. And they're 20 wires for $7 or something like that. It's a inexpensive option and seems to be wearing well. It's nice and firm, really flexible. So I, as a glasses wearer myself, I, I, I think that's great to, to, to have that option if you have a choice and know that someone who wears glasses will be using that, that can work well. But as Kathy mentioned, some, even for glasses wearers, the, some of the ones that Kathy has made without, because it, it fits so snugly, it, it didn't seem to fog up my glasses too, too much. So there's, that's something that is just kind of the user's preference. So, so thanks everyone, this, that is, all those tips have been great. Um, I want to jump into the, the short um, section about distributing window masks. Um, and this is a short section because it's a very inexact science. Um, for the masks we've made and distributed, as I mentioned, we just haven't gotten that much feedback and, and that's, that's very understandable. And, and we just have to, to try and, and um, work with the requests that we get and, and anyone who wants to make these, these masks, I would just, uh, if, you're, if you're thinking about doing those, these as a project individually, or as an organization to make them for, I just heard about someone interested in making them for a school um, or, or um, whoever you want to make them for, just don't make assumptions about what they want. Make sure that they really want them and can use them and that you make the type that, that are going to, to work for them. I think it's, um, for some communities, such as the deaf and hard of hearing community or seniors, it's you know the people wearing them and using them are the people working with the folks who are who 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 may have trouble hearing or are deaf. And so, so just working that out, it 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 just requires a little a little finesse sometimes. But basically, just just trying to be be respectful, and and I'm sure you all. You all would be, but it's not. You might, you might expect more if you want to make these. You might expect more, more feedback or more requests than you actually, than you actually get. Um, if, if you're with, if you're with an organization, I would say just follow the tips on this slide. And anyone can always contact me for guidance if you're interested in making masks or an organization interested in using these masks. And if you're in King County. Our project may have some window masks we can give you um, in the new year. And in addition to, to Valley Medical Center's uh, Children's Therapy um, Clinic, the original users uh, and requesters, we've made them for several other um, clinics and units. 
at Valley Med. We've also made um, them and provided them to the, the, the great regional nonprofit, the Hearing, Speech, and Deaf Center. And, and we've uh, so far provided some to the, the Vashon Island Senior Center. And so, so let me know if, if you um, have any, any thoughts there. And so, so now I'd say let, let's, we're getting close to the end. It's gone so fast and I, I've really, really enjoyed, um, I, I've learned a lot myself and, and um, let's start the questions and um, let me see if I can find the ones that, that, um, that Anna has, is sending me and then and then we have some already let's see um okay so i'm going to look on the q a um so okay let's start um um with the question um does the fabric bolt say the thread count no no, no. No, it doesn't. No. Okay. You kind of have to just go by the price, how much it costs, the more expensive, you know, like I was saying, the $2.99 um, fabric at Joann's would not work, but the $6.99 fabric would, you know, it's because that has the uh, same, it has more of a thread count. When you look at the the fabric, they it might be the ex, exact same pattern on the fabric, but the uh, it was put on a different grade of fabric, so it, it might look the same. And usually, you can tell by the raveling on the edges, because the least less expensive fabric ravels real easily. So. Also, also, if you hold it up to the light and you can see through it. Yes, yes. You don't want to see through it. When you get okay. used to it, when you get used to it, you can just tell when you, you know, when you purchase a lot of it. And me being a quilter, I use the ends off of all of my quilts to make the, the masks. So they got some pretty wild masks, but I'm sure they didn't scare anybody. So <laughs> We love them. <laughs> we love I, all, all your masks. Um, Another like, question, um, how do you sew in the nose wire and wrap a clip? And, and Lori, um, you said you'd like to answer this? Oh yeah, I, I, I accidentally pushed the button, but I did want to show that the, these nose wires also are available. We have them at Quality Sewing too, and they're very bendable um, to go over the nose. And these, if your sewing machine happens to sew over them, they won't hurt anything. Ask me how I know. Um, <laughs> so what I usually do is I put an extra channel um, in the in the nose area, I, and then i I tuck the um, I tuck the wire in, and then just stitch around it real carefully. I have also just stitched it down to the inside with a zigzag, measuring my zigzag stitch, and that works well as as well. Another question, are these masks as effective as the cloth masks with the non-woven non -woven filter insert? And I guess, I guess sewers giving their opinions on that would be, would be the best. I, I think it's a little hard to tell. And, and as effective, um, I guess the, the main criteria would be effective against the the virus, and I think that's debatable. We have some of the information. I think um, the the big piece uh, on from the um, the maker program on our website and our resources has a lot about that. But any thoughts on on that question, Soars? Are these masks as, can, as as the cloth masks with the non woven filter filter insert? I can at least speak up for for Valley um, that ours had to go through um, employee health. Uh, control and they had to be approved before we could wear them. We can't just, you know, bring something new in and decide to wear it ourselves. And they did approve them for use. Um, I, you know, they said we shouldn't wear them all day, every day. We should use them in specific situations where they are needed. 
um, but our at least our organization did feel that it was they were appropriate to wear and um, and and um, they signed off on it. So I, I can't give any numbers there. And there's you know again there's <laughs> maybe no studies or anything. But when they looked at it, they did feel that you were getting protection from them and that the uh, trade offs were acceptable. Thanks for mentioning that and. And um, I think they are very thorough and they took a little while to do that and yeah, they did. They did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They did approve those. So so that um, and it, so it's really hard to answer that question about whether, you know, which are which are most effective. But as Barbara hey. mentioned before, there are there are real trade-offs hey, and and they seem um, it, it it seems really for certain uses that that, that they make a lot of sense. So because I've been wearing them for longer extended periods of time when I'm out and about, I was very concerned about this. So when I was first starting making them, especially for myself, I added an extra layer of the non-woven material. So like the reusable bags that you get from the grocery store, that the re weird finicky material, I use that. And I just added a second layer. So just all, I did the same process, just had an extra little layer in there for that. And the other one that I have seen is putting some iron-on fusible and that helps with that interfacing that adds the non-woven material into the process, which actually helps. So it's like you have the woven and then if you add one layer of even whatever material it is, but as long as it's non-woven, that does help protect that little bit more. So if you're using it for longer periods. And the reason some people might want to try to use some of the other types of plastic for the clear panel is that they are types of plastic that are less um, considered less, less hazardous in some uses than the vinyl. And so the, um, the bags or the screen protectors, they are um, a plastic called polypropylene or uh, PET, polyethylene terephthalate. And um, so, so that's a reason, but in general, they, they don't always sew as well. Um, the King County Resources link that's been in the chat a couple of times has a link to Maker Masks and they have done scientific studies on the plastics and different materials. So that's a resource if you wanna dig into that further. And there've been a couple questions around the pattern and the measurements and the sizes and like instructional video. So the smile mask pattern, SSOL, has a great pattern out there. It's free, you could scale the PDF and print it at 75% if you need it smaller or print it larger, or you could pay them $4 and support their efforts and buy all eight size patterns if you'd like. We've been, I think, using the standard adult size and we've been pretty much making a single size. All of those resources are at the King County link. So we're not gonna get into that. We aren't gonna demonstrate sewing a mask because taking you through that step-by-step -step would take us too long. And SSOL has done a fabulous job with their videos. We wouldn't do better than they did. So I encourage you to find that video. And my first mask took me 90 minutes. It's not a simple, thing to get into your head necessarily. But once you've done one, I haven't had to look at the pattern again. I mean, I trace and cut my pattern, but I don't have to look at the instructions again. So, you know, 50 or 75 masks in, I just do the thing. And that was true with mask three. So it gets faster, it gets smoother. It's kind of a fun origami project. That uh, SSOL Sewing Seeds of Love pattern, that's the first one on our, our resources list. And that's a project from a, a teacher named Jacqueline in Singapore. And, and it's the, the information is provided free if you use it. She likes to that you give it attribution. And there's a way she has this, this little thing by, that I've seen other places 
buy me a coffee or you know, like you can make a little donation, feel free to do that if, or, or you could buy the pattern from, from her. But, but we'd like to thank, thank her for, for all that she's done to providing these resources free. The main pattern and the videos are, are all totally free. And um, so, so I, we have time for a couple more questions and I'm going to, to use the, um, some of the ones I've already received, I think. Maybe it might be just one or two. So, so let's, um, actually I, um, a one, one question was, um, about alternative products to, to, to these masks. And so, so I guess that would be a, um, a single use disposable um, plastic mask that would be expensive or, or buying um, uh, window masks like we're talking about from, from an online source from, from Etsy or something like that. Um, does there are also some people that are using face shields instead of masks so that their lips can be read and it doesn't provide filter like it's not safety for you it keeps you from breathing in somebody else's face but it is an alternative not one we'd recommend yes um that you you want a tight fitting mask whether it's a window mask or a regular mask that that is that is very breathable at work we usually um if it if it gets to a point where we can't stay six feet away from a customer we actually do use a face shield in addition to our mask if we have to be close to a customer thank thank you laurie and i can't believe that that um we're we're at the end now we're we're going to to wrap up um um, just check out check out the website and and we're and we'll we'll beef up the resources and include some of the new information today and we will have the recording up as soon as we can it could be a few days um, so I want to to give my thanks here um, thank you to our sewing crew um, Kathy Etchison Amanda Radak Lori Keep Jessica Nash and Gail Chinaga who is really Gail was really our inspirational leader in the beginning, and, and she couldn't be with us here today. Um, thanks so much um, to um, Barbara Bryant um, and, and everyone else at, at Valley Medical Center who has, who has helped us on this. Um, I'm mentioning specifically the people who are, are on the call today um, um, who are helping us with this workshop today. Lisa Hutchinson, our captioner, thank you. Um, Mary Thornton and Sarah Pettigrew are ASL interpreters. Um, and then Amanda Godwin, Anna Demers, Bridget Nolan. They're all with C plus C, the wonderful communications company that, that helps support our King County program. Thanks for everything you've done today and, and um, all this year on this project. And thanks so much again to all of you, you watching. Thanks for for wanting to help people in everything you do. Um, and in the new year, let's all just keep sowing seeds of love. So thank you all, I, have, I love you all and, and thanks so much for, for watching today. Thanks Tom. <laughs>